For those of you who know it yet, know me, my name is Michelle. I'm one of the two head coordinators of the project. The other one is Natasha, who is on maternity leave with her little baby, baby girl. So, hello Natasha. <laughs> um, we are live streaming to her. So what I will be talking about is essentially two things. The first one is the whole idea of the project, and then I will be talking a bit more about our workshops in Uganda and about our gallery, which is the lead partner. So the basic idea was we will be working with teenagers, we will be working in art museums. It's going to be practical, and we really wanted to make it not boring. Now, this seems quite easy, but it took us several months to find Daniel, to find the right methods, to find the right partners, um, to our connections. And yeah, now we have here me. Uh, so, essentially, when it comes to European projects, there are several um, chapters that you can address. The chapters that we addressed was audience development, so we basically wanted to make workshops for kids, and the other one was capacity building. This, this means that our trainers, who for the past 17 months have been involved in the workshops, will get some new knowledge, some new skills. And while we will be talking mostly about these workshops for the entire day, I would like to focus a bit more on capacity building. It was basically a series of meetings with the whole team because in-person communication is best. So, these are the youth workshops, the pictures. We then went, to, we, we began with training week in Uganda. So we met for one week, learned the method the hard way uh, for the first three days. And then in the last few days, we started to develop our own uh, workshops that you now see or can read about in the manual. Uh, this is a very intensive week where we first got to know each other, we really started to feel as one team. Then we moved on to mentoring. So in December we started the workshops, in January Daniel Weiss uh, visited us in all of the three museums, filmed us and also observed our workshops. So how do we do these workshops which were uh, in that time, in really infancy, in early stages, so how do we actually uh, do them? And this coincided with the specialist workshops. So as Daniel was in each museum, uh, we invited either a group uh, of museum staff or people from uh, other institutions to learn about the method and go through the same process, one week process, as we did in September. Now, we also came to Vienna in February, again, to meet the entire team and to um, shadow and observe uh, our colleagues at the Cayenne. And uh, it was, again, a very great experience and an experience that, that, that really emphasized the need for communication. Because I think that all art education departments are the busiest departments in their museums, and very often there's not enough time to sit down, to talk, to observe each other. So this was a beautiful a way of bringing the whole team together, really talking about um, the important issues, to learn about the methods, to learn about tricks and trades. So in the end, uh, we had media outreach, we will be hearing about the manual, about our massive online uh, course. And here are just some basic statistics. So we had over 600 workshops. Uh, we had over 8,000 pupils, used aged from, I think, 13 to 19 attending, and overall around 137 schools were uh, present or visited us. So this is basically the internal structure that went behind the scenes of the, of the project, but that was actually part of the project and a crucial part because we really want this method to live on, we really want experiences to you know, have some meaning. Now, uh, this brings us to the second part of our presentations, which will be about individual partners. 
So I will start by talking about the National Gallery of Slovenia. The National Gallery of Slovenia is 100 years old. Uh, its 99th birthday was two weeks ago. Uh, we are the main art museum in Slovenia. We house over 12,000 works of art. We are in three joint buildings and we cover the period between 12th century and the middle of the 20th century. So, firstly, uh, you can go to the National Museum, then you go to the National Gallery, then you go to the Modern Gallery. Uh, all of these three museums are within 200 meters of each other and you get to know the entirety of Slovenian art and history. Now, when it comes to our workshops, we have very, if I can say, advanced, uh, programming for children. For example, in the picture above, you see children playing with our mascot, uh, Garden Dwarf, has been our brand for 30 years. So we have a little dwarf who lives at the gallery for the past three decades. And the programming for younger children really revolves around him. Then we have language workshops, workshops that are more creative, uh, and we do several programming also for adults. So we do trips abroad and in Slovenia, we do lectures, concerts, drawings, really everything. Which brings us to our youth workshops. Now, it, what was really special about our workshops was the kind of youth and their expectations when they came to us. Because unlike in Serbia or in Kayan, where the expectations are either positive or, or neutral, uh, this, is the, this is the statistics of our young visitors. <laughs> so when they come, before they come to the gallery, 50% of them like, hate us, think that we are boring, we are polling lower than chlamydia. I mean, I really don't know what, what is happening and we don't yet they have the answer. Uh, so it is within probably next year we will try to find out what is going on when the kids are 14 that they really start to dislike the category. However, this is statistics before the visit. Then when they visit us with our, either uh, our regular workshops or with here workshops, uh, this happens. So, um, the lights are very high, they are basically on par with what the, what the statistics from Kaya or the Galeria Matisysevska uh, presents. So we are doing something right, but we really don't yet know why this pre preconception about our specific museum and our specific art uh, takes place. Uh, but we were very encouraged by this number because most of them said that they either like the pictures, so the art, and very much like the, the guides. So they were very um, enthralled by um, our young team. So we did workshops basically in two rooms. We did it in our creative studio and we did it in our middle level here. Uh, and here is one aspect of our workshops. Our workshops were not very small because the teachers in Slovenia book uh, between 60 and 180 kids per day. So we had to do several of these mega workshops. This one was the largest. It was 180 pupils in one day. Uh, we, yeah. So it took uh, the whole mid-level to really um, facilitate them in a lot of coordination um, because the gallery was also full with other uh, visitors uh, but we managed to, to really shorten the workshops and make sure um, that the bookings were in order. Now we did, did, did another experiment which was that we moved the workshops into the exhibition halls. We did this once and uh, we will do this again in October. So we have we are very lucky with our management that they allow us to you know experiment from time to time. So here are some pictures of the workshops. 
The other aspect of our workshops uh, was the wall of friendship. So basically, this is a nice introduction exercise uh, where especially first year secondary school students get to know each other, uh, they connect with what they expect from the workshops and what they will bring to the workshops, and then you cut these little self-portraits out and they choose one and they get a new friend. So they're making connections uh, inside this workshop because they don't yet know each other being you know, in the second week of their schooling together. So we try to focus on maybe some more both poignant and fun aspects of the workshop. So we did these memes for our social media campaign. Um, because, for example, in one of our workshops we were talking about family relations. So we had a happy family and a very sad and dysfunctional family. And our kids then you know, wrote um, a different end of the family stories. Um, in some other workshops, uh, they were trying to connect with modern art uh, by really focusing on the aspect of migration. So the question in this workshop uh, with the art of Zora Kusic was uh, how would you feel if you had to leave home right this moment? And then they went into the exhibition without any pre-knowledge and paired their emotions with the works of art. Uh, and in the end, they made a landscape. So basically, they connected all of the emotions to get like, a very complex web of you know, positive sides to migration and to negative sides of migration. And again, some of their statements were then transformed into memes. So uh, when they were talking about uh, different artworks, these are some of their statements um, about them. So, from a group of 3,000 school children, we got a couple of very nice uh, sayings and observations. So, that in short is about the different aspects, the special aspects of our workshops and of the project. And now I hand um, the microphone to Yana. Thank you.
We, need, uh, we needed to do is to cut down the hours of the workshop. So the first idea was that workshop is uh, last for four hours, but you cannot do that uh, in the school class. Uh, so we uh, minimized the time to one hour and a half, that is uh, two classes. Um, and uh, the teachers uh, told us that this is much better for the kids. Uh, so uh, we realized workshops for one hour and a half. So it is done in, in uh, the Polsky strategy, but it's a similar, you know, uh, it was similar in the workshops of the gallery Matica Srpska. But some things had anything that is you don't have the original work of art, which is <coughs> not good, but you have to uh, uh, step out of that and this obstacle uh, has to be taken away. Uh, so what our facilitators actually done is that they paid more attention to the artwork, of course, in a way of the, showing the reproductions. So we're, we're done as uh, posters, but facilitators paid more attention by analyzing the artwork more, and in this sense they were paying more attention uh, to the artwork even though it wasn't the original. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, that what's um, brought actually that uh, the kids and the teenagers um, actually paid more attention to the artwork and they uh, afterwards, when the finalizing the workshop and discussing about the theme of the workshop, they were really discussing with the help of an artwork. Uh, so, um, this is what actually made a few changes of the workshop and also um, museum, museum educators had another role. When teenagers enter the museum, they are guests in the museum, they are an audience. And when a museum educator enters the school, he's a guest, or she. <laughs> so uh, this is a different perspective. Um, when uh, children and kids, teenagers, uh, welcome you in the museum, in the, their school, they behave differently. So when they enter in the museum, they, uh, they are a little bit intimidated, of course, but they, they are guests, they find you as some kind of authority, and when you enter in a school, uh, then you, you are the guest, and uh, they are the ones who want to show off, to say something more about them, and they are more, so they behave differently. Uh, they are more relaxed because they are on their ground, and uh, they can talk to you much easier because they want to show how much they know or how much they uh, they're good or um, to show their teachers and also to their friends uh, how they're good in this. Uh, so uh, this new perspective and be, us being in schools actually brought a new feature to the human workshop. Um, so they were more expressive and what else that we got from this is that we got a better relationship with teachers. And uh, when you get a better relationship with teachers, then you can move on when they are coming now in the gallery. We have really uh, um, a lot of teachers booking the workshops because they know uh, what uh, they saw it already. And they know that we are the ones who entered that, their school, so they also want to come to our gallery now. Uh, so we, I think, made a good relationship with schools and this is also a feature that we got from uh, Hear Me in the Suitcase. Um, so at the end we reached probably more audience because when... And uh, they're all in the school, so you can just use kids <laughs> while, while they're, they are in their class, uh, classes. Uh, so we uh, had a chance to do more workshops that we would probably do uh, in the museum. Uh, so at the end, uh, I think uh, that if you are thinking about implementing some of the workshops in the museum, you can also think about um, taking them out of your museum and making them in some other places. That is also um, a thing that can uh, bring a change in your way of thinking and in, in your perspectives of how you see your museum and how you see uh, teenagers and, of course, the artworks. 
So that's about uh, the, the experience of the gallery in Madrid itself. So today, of course, we are doing workshops in the gallery itself. Um, it's always uh, good to have workshops in the museum, but uh, maybe you should also think about doing something uh, outside your museum. Thank you. Okay, uh, as you already experienced half of a KHM workshop um, in, in, the, in the morning, I can be very short, I guess, and um, because after me, Daniel Weiss, the master of disaster, will uh, show you very, very important things. But um, when we started with working with him, we never dared to dream that we would get results like this. And, for me, um, I mean, this is one of the typical presentation situations in the gallery, but um, really astonishing where those kind of nightmare models, uh, which have been built uh, during the workshops, where uh, pupils evidently felt the necessity to talk about uh, things they were uh, busy with. And one of the most uh, impressive uh, thing was a girl um, talking about pregnancy in this uh, in this model that she had built of a nightmare. So we had really very strong uh, things going on during those workshops and this was all done by the combination of uh, Lego with art. So this means uh, that the word Lego serious play sometimes was really very, very serious. And this had of course also to do with uh, the choice of uh, works of art that we have made before, which was for instance this uh, painting uh, by a titian, where one of those models about group identity and belonging to a group and hierarchy within a group was expressed uh, by one teenager uh, like this. So this was, was of course one of the more severe uh, paintings by uh, expressively, uh, so intentionally, we also had... Wait, what? What's that? It's not even as this thing is plötzlich off the top, can you take it? Ah, thank you so much. I touched the wrong, I touched the wrong part of this strange machine. So, uh, we also had, uh, we also had uh, uh, a work of art, uh, Michaelina Rautier, the Flemish uh, painteress, a female painter, where another important uh, topic for this group of age, party. Uh, is the subject, but also within a party you have certain hierarchies, you have certain roles within a group. So this is um, another painting that was in our portfolio. And this very dominating uh, theme of sudden love, appearance, disappearance, uh, attractions between the sexes was represented in this uh, Karachi Venus and Adonis painting. So you see that the choice of paintings that we have done uh, was really with the focus of this uh, teenage uh, age. Um, some of you in the morning had the encounter with the uh, Amazon sarcophagus and the other ones with Sasha did um, Van Dyck's uh, Samson and Delilah. And there I will show you some of those uh, models that have been built by teenagers, some of them very abstract about the relations and the constellations of this uh, group. And others becoming more concrete, some becoming very uh, realistic, so to speak. <laughs> and, um, but what you see with those kinds of models is what kind of associations or representations were done by the kids after the encounter of Lego and art within uh, the gallery. And for me, um, also in thinking about the position of art education within the museum, uh, the very important, I would always say, um, internally speaking, the most important aspect of the whole project is, uh, has been the visibility of art education within the museum, because the acting and the, the action in front of the paintings, here you have such a typical Mentimeter voting situation, as all of you did uh, this morning, and the discussion of the different Besides, it's such a simple question, like how many feet do you discover on the painting? So this is also a topic where you can talk about language and uh, art. 
um, and the function of language in um, being busy with art was a very important um, feature of the workshop, in my view. And uh, with the Amazons, it was interesting to see how the models about the questions, how do you feel after the conflict. Uh, I mean, everybody of us educators who did those workshops would directly know that this model of a feeling after the conflict is done most probably uh, by a boy, whereas uh, such a positively um, the model with a, with a pink finale is most probably um, uh, the result of a, of a girl's um, experience within the museum. We had um, a lot of feedback, which we have a kind of English translation underneath, um, and they were almost totally very positive. The only thing that has always been criticized are the huge staircases within the museum, but we can't do anything against that. And an especially nice um, uh, conclusion was uh, wrapping, wrapping uh, art in uh, Lego or wrapping Lego in art. I don't know if she means developing or wrapping, I don't know, but it's a very beautiful uh, language image for that and for, for what we have done during those more than 300 uh, workshops. And I think for all of us who did it, it was always the most beautiful moment when we left the studio or the Bassano Hall and went with the models uh, in the gallery. And one feels from those photos uh, a certain uh, yeah, self-consciousness and even proud uh, with the teenagers going there and taking uh, what they have done really serious and then uh, discussing uh, the whole thing in front of the uh, originals visible for the rest of the museum public. This is a very important aspect, I think, for the, for the whole project. I will show you some of those uh, impressions. And you feel a certain, I hope you feel from those photos, the concentration that has been taking place. So the, the, the mixture of playfulness and uh, serious concentration was a very positive outcome of this uh, new workshop uh, form. And um, you also feel a certain spirit of uh, wit and, and uh, sense of humor that was very important in a lot of those uh, situations. And uh, in the end, we had a really a huge amount of very happy and content uh, groups. Um, and at the very end, I sometimes had the feeling that even the paintings uh, were happy with what was going on in front of them and in some cases I'm absolutely sure that the figures within, within the paintings were really absolutely grateful for what, uh, what we offered them. And uh, I really think that um, this whole uh, approach um, has given a certain uh, perspective or an, an idea of a way how art education could be that uh, gives reason to be very optimistic. So thank you for that, and the next speaker is uh, Daniel. Daniel Lenz.
So why don't you be the next one to come visit us in Vienna, Ljubljana, on book your visit today. So he will be very happy to know that you already made Vienna. So, and that you already know the colleagues from Ljubljana and Novosa. So they will be waiting uh, for you. Hello, so, so, what's the next one? And it goes here, right? Yeah. So, what is the main idea that we have be behind Britney? So the idea is, uh, what if, you know, keep questioning what we do at school level, what we do at museum level. So, institute talk about Caravaggio, why we don't talk about the light, and how Martin Scorsese is using the light inspired by Caravaggio in the movies, and what happened with the movies in our society. What happened if we get inspired in pop art, and if to talk about colors, we can talk about comics, and the connection with comics and pop art, on Roy Lynch's time, for example, and as you know, each comic has a hero, and a hero how the superpowers of all the heroes can help us to manage our daily life. And these kind of things is what we are looking for uh, in art. So what if Institute talk about art deco and the influence on the painting? We talk about fashion and what Sara, HM and other multinational companies are doing in Pakistan in producing cheap labor and so on, and then we can talk about social issues and how we can work with them in order to become more sustainable. So I will show you now uh, some clear results. So during this project, uh, we visit the three museums and we take the endless hours of video, and we made some clips that we wanted uh, to be the memorabilia, the facade, or the record of the project. The first uh, that I will show you in a second is about many different things. But this one is about bringing <coughs> and this is exactly what is bringing me. So we are talking about, you are, you, are, you are heavily driven today by Lego. But this project is not about Lego, right? If you got the wrong question, the kids will do nothing. And so the real work is made by the teachers, by the Kusa Mitlu, that spend endless hours thinking what kind of question I should place connected to the painting and what kind of subject I want to talk about of the different paintings. So, in general terms, when we talk about Brickme, we, what we did is a combination of different methodologies that are very common, very common, so I'm not reinventing the wheel, no? but I'm instructing the most important part of different methodologies. Design thinking, Lego series play, of course, Kanban, Agile, we gamify the experience. So, you need to know about all these kind of things in order to really produce a good result and a good experience in your, in your museums and your schools. And why we want this? Because we are talking about empathy, group dynamic, uh, social skill, betrayal, power, abuse, migration, fear. Most of the kids think today these are their own problems, but we already know that this has been painted 500 years ago and they are based in a myth mythology of the Greeks, which is thousand years ago, which shows to us that we didn't change so much in thousands of years, that we still behave in the same way, and these are problems of our society. So the idea is to bring them and they say, okay, that's normal what you experience. And here we are, we are considering, we, we have learned many lessons in this project, this is why I'm so grateful to those school families and teachers in the schools because I learned very important lessons. And now the question that I'm doing myself is if you have a museum, only a museum, and if you have a school, only a school, or we can merge them and create something new where we can cooperate together to address social issues, problems, 
that are not today being addressed because we are showing paintings <coughs> in the walls and we are teaching according to the curriculum of the schools, right? And uh, we already know that the kids come to the museum because it's less boring than staying in school, which also more boring, <laughs> than, you know? So I think we have in our hands the power to change these things, and this is one of the great outputs of this project. And you will see the first video that we did, and this is about migrations. Hmm? Don't cry, because it's quite powerful, and here it goes. Once again, you have to click. is 
uh, something that we discovered while we were doing the training and, and the project implementation, and it's about a personal journey. something to them and we learn from them. So it's a win-win situation. The last clip uh, is about this house. You know, when we did the first workshop in Ljubljana, we asked what is the name of this museum, or what would be the constraint and problem of this museum, and what came to the table was the building itself, which is majestic, imperial. It's imposing when you enter for the first time, maybe you're used to, but uh, like me, that I've never been here before. Now I, that is my four, five, six time. But <laughs> the first time you this is oh my god, this is the husband and wife. This is you get you know all the old masters are living here. So what are we gonna do with this, right? So uh, after taking a lot of hours, then we produce a clip, and the clip is very I would say we 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 get, got inspired on. Uh, matrix revolution and then we call KHM the revolution because we wanted to show the contrast of that standing very imperial building how by introducing uh, new methodologies you can make them colorful different and, and show a completely different approach so and here it is <coughs> Festival from India. You can find uh, new activities which are very colorful uh, inside of the museum. But you also have this that we already uh, was shown by address, and we don't want to deal with this. When we talk about brick me, what we really want is to take art in a completely different scenario, right? So the message, the final, the two final message is. This is what we want. What if 
we can take this from the wall to this to the Hanoi Vietnam street. How we can change the perceptions about art and what kind of issues, subjects we can discuss with the pianos and not with the youth anymore. I would say that thinking in, in future developments, this is a fantastic experience, which would be because you have the guide tool, you have the, this, this audio guys, you have the people that only pay the tickets and, and, and read the, the panels, or you can have an enhanced experience, which is collecting the experience of your visitors, then you get to know your visitors, and you change completely. And the connection between the museums and the schools that they discover new relations and you, you can help to each other to work out many social problems. And I want to end with this fantastic image there, you know, this man already. And uh, he stated in, in, in the tapes, now, now he, he cut his hair, so you cannot recognize him, but uh, that it's not about knowledge, it's, it's an emotional approach, it's an impact. What we are looking for, that for the first time we can give to our visitors a voice to express what this so-called high art means for them. So they, they, they find, as the kid said, that in this new approach they find there is something for them, something new in the museums that did not exist before. And then talking about business, if you don't know your customer segment, you will not attract them. So that's my speech for today. Thank you. So, uh, in the end uh, of this presentation of uh, the workshops, of the methodology behind, uh, of the different partners, uh, we do have a present. Normally within a project you would write a report, you would produce much text and collect numbers and these reports are always disappearing somewhere, we don't know exactly where. We wanted to make it a little bit different, we have to do reports, but we also produced a sort of text which is of use for others, teachers, colleagues, so we produced a manual, a museum's manual. And just <laughs> distributing them. So we just have a look at the manual and a few words to the manual, perhaps it is a small book. So we try to reduce as much as possible because you know, we will read a book that is too big. Uh, so in the manual, in the book itself, you find a short description of the methodology of the project and a short description of all the workshops in different countries. So we experience already a part of the workshop in this house, but we will also find a closer explanation of the workshops held in Ljubljana and in Novi Sad. Uh, it is difficult to explain all of our experience, how it works, how we developed it in such a small book, but at least to try. Um, to give inspiration, to give a sort of guideline, <laughs> and that's what the manual is for. And for any other thing, and deeper information, we all are ready to give more words uh, than have been possible to put into this small book. Yes, for this book, I need mean, my words. Um, oh, we are not leaving yet the end. Um, Daniel, do you want to present another form? So let's see. try to disseminate this new approach, this new idea, this project. Uh, writing and editing a book is one thing, a very traditional form, another form, but we also have other 
Yeah, when I was born, you have to plant a tree, you have to write a book, and you have to have a son. But on the son, I failed because I have daughters. <laughs> and now you need to have a LinkedIn profile, and you have to have a, what is called MOOC, or MOOC, which is a multimedia online open course. And, and we're still in, in, the, in the beta production. Uh, for the moment it's in English, but it might be in, in German and Slovenian as well. And in fact, uh, uh, this is a, a Udemy, Udemy.com, you see on, on, on the web browser. It's a MOOC platform that is open and everybody can publish. You have to comply with some requisites on the quality of the contents, on the videos and the text and so on. So they pre-check before they admit this. Uh, you can do it for free, uh, you publish for free, your course could be free or you can charge. Or you can put a price and then you, you, you enter in a, in a sort of business model uh, with the platform. So we're doing this for free, it is available for everybody. Why do we put this here is because they already got the most difficult thing, which is the audience. They have thousands of people around the planet Earth already checking this and then you can track any kind of courses for free uh, here. So the main idea is uh, you go to curriculum and we have the different lectures so which correspond somehow with the manual that you already have there. And we, uh, the platform is asking you to do something with the students, right? And then they offer different possibilities. So you can put a, a quiz test, you can put a, a, an assignment, you can put, uh, they offer four or five different possibilities there. And you can uh, attach any kind of uh, documents that you have. In this case, some of the chapters of the book, which uh, were originally made on in PDF file that we have, then we cut it to different uh, chapters and we were assigning to the different things with a, a, a structure that need to be reviewed by the partners and so on. And it has a main core, which are the three different kinds of uh, workshops. One is in Vienna, one in, in Vienna, and, and one in Novisa, which is uh, the part that you have in, in, in there. And there is some assignment there, uh, like to reflect uh, through the different questions or some questions uh, related to the information that, that you read. And, and you see here, here, you can add a quiz, you can uh, add coding also, you can add an assignment, and you can uh, add a pra practice test there to pass. And you can create endless sections. So this is the first one that we did it and, and still we have one month more for the project and then we are going to polish and make the final version uh, available. So, that's it. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Bravo, bravo. So one hour lunchtime, somebody can go to the collections, of course, and study the works of art. But for everybody else, we have a kind of uh, lunch now. Okay. <laughs>